Hey people, so this is a multiplayer video, but if you don't play multiplayer, this will be even funnier because this is new information for you and you get to laugh at all the stupid ways that we die in ranked ladder games without having to ever suffer through it yourself. In single player, you don't die until long after the game is basically over for you, but this is not the case in multiplayer. We play with city elimination and regicide, depending on the mod. These options can speed up the game, but can also lead to some cheesy, undeserved, or even just plain stupid deaths. So today, we're gonna, I'm going to give you a list of all those stupid ways to die in multiplayer Civ 3. So number 10 on the list is the miss move. This was the one that inspired the list. Civ 3 is played with uh, simultaneous moves and a turn timer. There are no take backsies. If you mess up your movement, you are stuck with it. And there are some weird features and bugs that can cause you to mess up your moves. The rubber band bu bug... Bizarre pathing choices, stack movement where one of your units runs out of moves and so they all run out of moves, of course. There's all kinds of stuff, but this one I'm playing on screen is a particularly egregious example. So Ironclad has just dropped on top of me. Uh, what's going to happen now, I don't know if it was because of the, the cruise missile or the declaration of war caused by the cruise missile, but it's going to watch. I'm going to drag to the... Oh, no. Looks like I'm going for a hike in the wilderness. It just recentered my camera and it just zapped me off screen and hey that one tau would have kept me alive there. I placed this low on the list because there are definitely techniques and tactics you can learn as a player to minimize miss moves. Uh, a numpad move here for example would have prevented my death and sometimes you just click the wrong thing and that's not too hard to accept but it's still pretty dumb. Number nine on our list is king snipes with cruise missiles. So while we're on the subject of future start let's talk about regicide. Regicide is the kill condition we use in modern and future. Lose your king, you die. This works because you, you can't really keep your king safe in these mods. Normally you just keep your king in a random city that doesn't border an enemy, and run the king to a different city that if you might lose the one that the king is in. Well, not in future or modern. Aside from all kinds of offensive options like marines, convoys, and paratrooping, you also need to worry about king snipes. That means people put cruise missiles into nuclear submarines and fire them into your cities trying to kill your king. Better yet, using espionage from the intelligence agency or even from an embassy, they can look inside your cities, find your king, and kill it with their cruise missiles. Unless you have a ton of units to stack on top of your king, while still guarding every other city or thing on the map that you want to control, you cannot rely on your king being safe inside a city. Number eight on our list is king snipe carriers. So you can't put your king in a city. Where do you put it? Do you put it outside a city? You fool, you absolute fool, you have fallen into my trap. See, what I've done is I've loaded a carrier full of planes, one to recon and find your king, and three bombers to kill it. Ironically, if your king was in your city under one unit, it'd be invisible to my recon, and it'd almost be certainly safe uh, from the strategy. But yeah, you can't keep your king in your cities because they can be seen with espionage and sniped by subcruises, and you can't keep your king outside your cities, otherwise they can be spotted by recon from a carrier and sniped that way. There is no safe place to put your king in future modern, aside from under a stack of 20 units. That's part of the reason that these mods are such fun, and that's also part of the reason that these mods are such absolute bullshit. So, when new players play their first game of future, one thing they ask is, can I scout around with my king? And that's a tough question to answer, because yes, they can scout around with their king, but you can't go too far, otherwise the enemy can do this. So he came from the north, and now he is trapped. He can't return home because the king doesn't have an attack value. It's a 0-3-2 unit. This means I can just build a galleon in Thebes, send it over, and his king is just helpless. The only counterplay is he would have to send his own galleon to try to either pick up his king or send some unit to defend his king. So yeah, if you, if you just happen to do this, like you can block it with the explorer, with your own king, with your scout, and if you do that, you can get an easy kill. And for them, it's an easy bullshit death. Number six is the single stray unit. In multiplayer Civ 3, you might have dozens of cities. In MPT, you'll have dozens of units, and in QC, that number could easily be over 100. There is a lot to keep track of, and that's on top of everything that your allies and your opponents have. As a result, things can kind of just slip between the cracks. If you're playing as Dark Red Carthage, the light red Roman warrior might seem like it's your own if you're looking through your peripheral vision. Like I said, you could easily have hundreds of units and you'll lose a city to a single warrior potentially, or a jaguar warrior, or in this case, a one health knight. God forbid you're up against conquistadors. And as a reminder, MPT and QC are played with city elimination. Losing cities means you die. Now, this might not seem like it deserves a super high place on the list because it is strictly your fault in a sense, but it's the constant mental burden that this places on you that makes me put it a little higher. Like, 
yeah, I think this random pikeman in my land has moved this turn, but am I absolutely sure? Maybe it can double move and take my empty city. You have to constantly jungle, juggle all this information every single turn of every single game. It puts you under an immense amount of stress, and sometimes you just get it wrong, and you die. Number five is the insta retake. So, when you stack attack and you take a city in Civ 3, how many of your units enter? That's a decision the devs had to make when adapting Civ 3 for simultaneous move multiplayer. Is it just the unit that won the final combat? Is it every unit left in your stack? Two. The answer is precisely two. I don't know why. It's oddly specific and it's based on nothing, but when you stack attack and you take a city, two of your units will enter the city. This raises a problem because you can't activate the units in your stack while the attack is underway. So if someone just hangs out with a stack next to the city you're about to take, they can stack attack the city before your stack moves in to reinforce the city you've just taken. If that happens, then you have to reinforce your units individually, which is difficult to do at a faster pace than the attacker can kill your units. You could have 100 units in your stack, but you could lose the city to a, sta uh, a stack of the enemies if you don't move them into the captured city fast enough. So we have an example of this on screen. Uh, the mines are about to lose a city, or sorry, the Iroquois are about to lose a city. They have that stack of knights there, but because it's involved in combat with the Mongol stack, they don't have the opportunity. Notice how most of the Ottoman stack will stay on that tile. Yeah, so there's a window there where he could have counterattacked the city, uh, but he missed it because he was in combat with the, the Mongol stack there. Number four is tile block. So if you play single player, you might not really be aware of how tile yields work and what they actually do. But as you grow experience with multiplayer, you will become more aware. Painfully aware. There are a bunch of things that can block your tile yields and fuck up your city micro. For example, a common advanced level play as the Aztecs is to just dance around the enemy land on top of their bonus grasslands and forests at end of turn. By stepping on a tile, their citizen can't work it, and since players are usually trying to avoid wasting shields, if they lose one or two shields at the end of turn, they might be one or two shields short of whatever they were trying to build. This can result in a kill sometimes. Someone moves into your land end of turn, and that blocks the unit that you were counting on having to defend the city. There are a bunch of variations of this. Pollution is a really annoying one because of the randomness factor. I'm replaying the clip from the start of this video here because tile block also happened during this death of mine. I checked earlier in the video, my happiness is fine, but when he lands on my high commerce uranium tile, that blocks the commerce. This means I get less commerce uh, converted by the happiness slider into happy faces, causing my capital to disorder. And when I go to draft right here, I can't because the city's disordering. And so I die. So we're into the top three now, and number three has to be team kill. We're not talking about intentionally killing your ally, although that has happened on occasion. Uh, no, there are actually a surprising number of ways to accidentally misplay and kill your teammate. I don't have footage of this for obvious reasons, but... Got your king in a galleon? Better hope you don't ram it into your ally's submarine. Moving your doom stack inside the ally's land? Better hope you don't misclick on their city. There are... There's almost no counterplay against this. I can't put it higher up on the list because it is absolutely hilarious, but it has to be here because it is completely not your fault, and com according to ladder rules, it is a legal kill. The second dumbest way to die has to be suicide boats. Boating is legit. It's frustrating, but there's tons of counterplay. Have sentries, get naval priority, line your coast, or just defend your cities. It's pretty easy to predict what angle they'll be coming from in an ancient era game because they have to stick to coast tiles. In MPT, there are no seafaring civs too, so boats have a 50% chance of sinking on sea or ocean tiles. But what makes this dumb is that the rules of preparing for attacks just don't apply when you're talking about suicide boat attacks. Theoretically, at any time during a game of MPT or QC, a naval attack come from any angle. Even risking sinking for a single turn opens up a ton of new options, but you can go beyond that too. As long as someone is stupidly lucky and desperate or crazy enough to try, there is no naval attack angle that is off limits. And you can't really sentry against it because your own boats can only hang out on coast tiles. So what's the number one dumbest way to die in Civ 3? Well, everything I've mentioned here so far involves being killed by somebody. What if I told you that you could die in Civ 3 without being killed by someone? So your king has three defense, right? <laughs> it's actually possible to die to barbarians in multiplayer Civ 3. This only happens in games of future once in a blue moon, and it normally happens when you're trying to do something risky, like trying to fight with multiple barbarians at once, or fighting with a damaged king. But it does happen. If we run the odds here, you can see just regular king against regular barbs, 1% chance of you dying if you don't retreat. 
It is the dumbest thing on earth, but you can legitimately die to it. It's so dumb that when I was creating Modern, I only gave barbs one hit point, and I gave humans a 1000% combat bonus against them. But despite that, since I wrote the script to this video, someone has told me that this has happened in Modern. So that's my answer to this whole question. The dumbest way to die in multiplayer Civ 3 was when Zdatis lost to a one health barbarian unit, despite having a 1000% combat bonus with his king in Modern. That's some bullshit right there. Okay, yeah, so that's it for today. Let me know if you guys have any comments in the comments. And what's the dumbest way that you've personally died in a multiplayer game of Civ 3? I'm looking forward to hearing it. See you guys next time.